Hello and welcome to NTD Canada News Election Special Series. I'm your host, Gary Bai. News this week signals that Canada might be left out of any important intelligence alliance. The People's Party of Canada, led by Maxime Bernier, is seeing a further uptick in the polls as the 2021 election campaign enters the final stretch. Foreign investors are growing more worried that Canada's federal election on Monday could result in a deadlock that hampers Ottawa's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and further slows the economic recovery from the crisis. The latest report by the Globe and Mail revealed that the National Microbiology Laboratory is linked to a high-ranking officer in China's People's Liberation Army. Without further ado, let's get to it. We are only three days away from September 20th, Election Day. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau was in Montreal on September 16th. Trudeau grabbed the chance to blast the Conservatives after Alberta Premier declared a public health emergency. Trudeau blamed O'Toole's earlier praise of the Alberta Premier for management of the pandemic. Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole was in St. John, New Brunswick and Truro, Nova Scotia. O'Toole was facing the trouble caused by Alberta's declaration of a public health emergency. When answering questions from reporters on this issue, O'Toole criticized Trudeau for calling a $600 million election during the pandemic instead of continuing to managing the crisis. NDP leader Jack Singh was in Toronto, Oshawa and Kingston, Ontario. Commenting on Alberta's public health emergency, Singh blamed Trudeau's snap election for complicating the efforts to contain the pandemic. Along his campaign trail on this day, Singh continued to focus on long-term care profit issues and funding NDP's plan from taxing billionaires. Bloc Québécois leader Yves-François Blanchet was in mont saint hilaire and Saint-Jérôme, Quebec. Blanchet told Radio Canada he prefers a minority government from this election. That would put the bloc at the balance of power so he could prioritize increases to both old age security payments and the amounts the provinces and territories get through the Canada Health Transfer. Blanchet also said the bloc would request to terminate federal fossil fuel subsidies and push for a transition to a more sustainable economy that protects the environment. People's Party leader Maxime Bernier was in Hamilton, Oakville and Toronto, Ontario. Bernier showed up at several campaign activities on September 16th. One rally was held outside CBC headquarters and the rally was calling to defund the CBC to echo the party's promise to cut government funding to the state broadcaster. And Green Party leader Anime Paul was observing the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur on September 16. News this week signals that Canada might be left out of an important intelligence alliance. The deal will see the countries share more military technologies and information than they currently do, some of it related to artificial intelligence, quantum computing and cyber capabilities, according to The Globe. The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance is an intelligence sharing platform among Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the United States. It targeted communist countries such as the Soviet Union and China. This relationship lasted throughout the Cold War and the War on Terror, with different rivals in each period. In late 2018, the alliance's focus underwent a pivotal change. When Meng Wanzhou was arrested by RCMP based on an extradition request from the U.S. to face charges for defrauding a U.S. bank. This made the Five Eyes look to the Chinese Communist Party. On Wednesday, U.S. President Joe Biden announced a working group that included only three of the Five Eyes, the U.K., Australia and the U.S. Now known as AUKUS, the working group is a direct effort to counter the CCP's rise in military and intelligence power, as reported by Politico. Canada is not a part of this deal. The exact reason for this has not been made clear, but we do know a couple of things. One, Canada is the only country in the Five Eyes Alliance that had not banned Huawei from its 5G network. And two, the US has warned in the past that it would not work alongside countries that use Huawei infrastructure. Eric Miller, a political and business analyst, told The Globe that the three-country pact would represent those that are willing to stand up to the aggressive expansionist agenda of the CCP. It would be fair to say that Canada's international position with the rising communist regime can shift significantly depending on which party wins in this federal election. During a campaign stop on Thursday, O'Toole was asked whether he would ask to join the AUKUS alliance, and his reply was a definitive yes. He went on to criticize his rival, saying that Canada is becoming more irrelevant under Justin Trudeau's leadership. If elected, O'Toole would ban all Huawei infrastructure from Canada's 5G network. On the other side of the aisle, Trudeau was also asked about the AUKUS deal on Thursday, and he responded, quote, We will continue to work alongside our partners to ensure that we're keeping ourselves safe and we're standing up against challenges, including those posed by China. In comparison with the Conservatives' platform, however, the Liberal platform does not mention any specific commitments countering aggression from the CCP. 
The People's Party of Canada, the PPC, led by Maxime Bernier, is seeing a further uptake in the polls as the 2021 election campaign enters the final stretch. Support for the party has been rising in the polls, with Nanos putting the national vote for PPC at 6.9% as of September 16th. Provincially, the party has the most support in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, followed by Alberta and Ontario. In the campaign stop in Oakville on September 16th, speaking to a crowd of around 300, Bernier stressed he is determined to fight for freedom and emphasized his opposition to mandatory vaccine passports and other COVID restrictions. This country has been one of the freest countries in the world in the last 164 years, and now we're losing our freedoms. We cannot take for granted our freedoms anymore, Bernier said. And we know that without freedom, there is no human dignity, there is no equality of rights, there is no economic prosperity. We're fighting for our Western civilization, we're fighting for our way of life, we're saying no to that new normal. There is no new normal. We just want to go back to our life before COVID-19, he said. While on the campaign trail, Bernier has put the most focus on the issues of vaccine mandates and lockdowns. Because we're fighting for liberty or freedoms, more people understand now that what we had in the last 19 months is something we don't want anymore. No mass mandates, no lockdown, no curfews, Bernier told a crowd in Elmer, Ontario on September 15th. The PPC promised to repeal vaccine mandates and regular testing for federal civil servants and workers, and repeal vaccine passports for travelers. Foreign investors are growing more worried that, that Canada's federal election on Monday could result in a deadlock that hampers Ottawa's response to COVID-19 pandemic and further slows the economic recovery from the crisis. Polls show Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's centre-left Liberals virtually tied with the opposition Conservatives ahead of the September 20th vote, raising the prospect that no party will be able to form even a stable minority government. Adding to the uncertainty is an expected increase in mail-in voting that could delay the counting of ballots in some key electoral writings. Financial markets generally view Canadian elections from the vantage point of which of the big parties would be the most friendly for investors, but that tendency may take a back seat this time to the desire to have a government that quickly solved the crisis. The results of Canadian elections typically are known within hours of the post closing. Even when no party has won the majority of seats, it is usually clear which will form the government and what the general policy priorities will be. And coming up, we have details about the Chinese scientists who were fired from our top level 4 lab that handles the world's deadliest diseases and where the leaders are in the polls. But before we continue, please subscribe if you're new to this channel and turn on that notification bell so you won't miss any new videos. We'll be bringing you election updates from coast to coast and the latest news coverage. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to our stories. The National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg is Canada's only level 4 lab that handles the world's deadliest diseases. The latest report by the Globe and Mail revealed that the laboratory is linked to a high-ranking officer in the People's Liberation Army, or the PLA. The PLA is loyal to the Chinese Communist Party. The high-ranking officer, Major General Chen Wei, collaborated on Ebola research with National Microbiology Laboratory scientist Dr. Xiang Guo Chu, who was later fired from the Winnipeg lab. Chu was leading the vaccine development and antiviral therapy section at the lab before she was escorted out of the building with her husband in July 2019. In June this year, the federal government acknowledged the firing of Dr. Chu and her husband were related to sensitive national security matters, although the federal government refused to release related documents on the matter. With the dissolution of parliament for election, the disclosures have been terminated. Author Elaine DeWar was the first person to report the links between Chu and Chen in her book, which raised questions about the origins of the COVID-19 virus. The link between the two people has been confirmed by The Globe too. The Globe found that Chen collaborated with Chu on two scientific papers on Ebola. According to The Globe, three laboratory scientists who participated in the Ebola research projects said they had no idea that Chen was a major general and China's top biologist. They said Chu did not share information with them about her collaborations with Chinese scientists. Four months earlier, before Chu was escorted out of the Winnipeg lab, it shipped Ebola and Hennepa viruses to the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. Chu was overseeing the transfer. When asked if it is standard practice for scientists at the National Microbiology Laboratory to work with high-level military medical researchers in China, Anne Grenier, the spokeswoman for the Public Health Agency of Canada, answered that, Canada's scientists have collaborated with Chinese scientists to research deadly viruses such as Ebola, but there were no institutional agreements with the Chinese military. 
The Public Health Agency of Canada would not release whether Chin had ever visited the Winnipeg lab. The agency said because of privacy laws, it cannot disclose whether Chin had been there. Canadian Security Intelligence Service did not offer comments on the matter, and it said it is under investigation by the RCMP. While Ward Elcock, a former director of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, said Canada should not allow this type of collaboration. Chin is also the key leader of development of China's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine was developed by Chen's team and CanSino Biologics, a private company backed by the Chinese military. In September 2020, Chen received the Medal of the Republic, the highest state honor awarded by Chinese leader Xi Jinping for her contribution to the vaccine. The vaccine was based on the Canadian biological product licensed by Canada's National Research Council as a part of an effort to jointly develop the vaccine with Canada. The partnership ended with the CCP blocking the shipment of the vaccine samples days after Ottawa announced readiness for clinical trials in Canada back in May 2020. The National Research Council has now invoked the arbitration clause in a contract with CanSino because the spokeswoman for the NRC said it had no dispute with CanSino itself, which was prepared to provide vaccines to Canada. The latest Nanos poll released on Wednesday shows the Liberals at 31.9%, up 1.4% from the last poll. Conservatives had a slight drop, 0.9 percentage points, to 30.3%. The two parties are technically tied if the survey's margin of error is factored in. The NDP is at 21.2%, PPC at 6.7%, Bloc Québécois at 6.4%, and the Green Party steady at 3.2%. The daily tracking figures are based on a three-day rolling sample comprising of 1,200 interviews. With that said, thank you for watching NTD Canada News. If you like this video, please give us a like and share. It will help more people see our channel. We'll be back with more comprehensive election coverage, and we'll see you next time.